I just got off a ship from the ER and I was thinking a lot about vet school interviews because there's a lot of applications that have gone out recently and I'm sure a lot of you are going to have interviews in response to those applications. So I thought I'd go over some things that you should maybe think about going into your interview um, and give you some tips and tricks for interviewing. So the basics are you should be on time and dress professionally. Now, some of these college campuses, which is where most of the interviews take place, are a little intricate. I traveled to a couple of schools to interview, um, and I actually did a little bit of a scout out of the place beforehand to see where I would park, because parking can be a pain sometimes, um, and where exactly I was going for the interview. And that helped a lot on the actual day of, to not have as much anxiety about simple things that you can control. So I would make sure you know exactly where you're going, where you're gonna park, what your time frame needs to be to get there and get there on time. Um, obviously, you do not wanna be late for your vet school interview. Now, another thing is dressing professionally. And I think that kinda depends on where you're going. Um, I think professional dress can be anything from wearing an actual pantsuit, um, which I did, to wearing a suit suit, um, to wearing a skirt and suit. I also think that you can wear a sport jacket, a tie, um, you can wear nice nice khakis slash dress pants and boots and be okay. Especially in Texas, at Texas A&M, a lot of people were dressed in um, nicer slacks with boots uh, and maybe not in suits and I think that was appropriate for the place. Do not wear inappropriate footwear, I would wear closed toed shoes, I wouldn't wear heels that are too much, too loud, just because you don't want anything that's going to take away from them focusing on you. Um, I do think it's nice to accessorize with things that will draw attention to your face, um, but don't have anything too crazy because you don't want your dress and your appearance to take away from what you have to say because what you have to say is what really is going to sell them on you, obviously not what you're wearing. So I would wear something that is appropriate and professional. And I think there's lots of options out there. Um, the other thing is you should have your answers prepared. So you really need to think about if there is anything in your transcript, in your history, um, maybe something that you, or an area you feel is a little weak that you might need to explain. Um, so for example, I was in college and I had a rough year, sophomore year, just with family stuff and that made my grade sophomore year not as good and so I went into it knowing they were gonna say looks like you had a pretty good year except this year you know you didn't do as well and I actually got some C's and D's so um, I already had in my head that I was going to be open upfront honest about what happened um, about how difficult that time was for me and I think show them who I really was and why I wasn't as focused on school because obviously I was focused on my family and I think that shows just another character trait of who you are um, and where your heart is and I think it's totally reasonable to say this was going on outside of school and that took a priority because that was more important to me at that time and I don't think that means that school's not a priority to you it shows that you or caring, kind person, or maybe a person that has struggles but has overcome those struggles. So you need to look at yourself honestly, and you need to have those answers ready. I would actually practice those answers, I would write out what you're gonna say. You do not wanna be caught stuttering um, and unsure of explaining why maybe there was a weakness in your um, application per grades, things like that. I think you can turn it into a strength and you can show them another side of you. Now that means that you are selling yourself. So any question you answer needs to not just be answered with a, yes, I'm a leader. It needs to be, when I was the president of the International Arabian Horse Association, I traveled to Denver several times a year and I ran board meetings and I had to give speeches and I had to write a newsletter. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a generic answer. It can't just be a, I work well with people. It needs to be, when I was a technician at this hospital, there was a little bit of drama, but I was the person to step in and do A, B, and C and address the issue. So you have to make it very specific to you. You need to really look at what makes you stand out, what experiences you've had, what connections you have, um, 
I think name dropping dropping is okay. Uh, I think that in this world, you have people that are brought into your lives for a reason. Um, so if there is a relationship um, of somebody at the school, if you have been mentored by somebody, if you have been told something by somebody, I think it's great to say, I've done research with Dr. X and that person has you know, really encouraged me to apply to vet school and they think that I would benefit because I have a heart for this and I really wanna pursue this. And so I think that you need to do those things in a subtle, intelligent way. Um, but you want to pull on everything that you have in your past and in your life. You cannot go in there. You can't and just say, I really love animals. And I had a dog when I was six and my dog died and it broke my heart and the vet was so great with it. So I want to be a veterinarian. No, no. Everyone has a story. Everyone has that pet that they loved growing up and that was amazing. There has to be more to it. There has to be more behind it. And so really be thoughtful about what your reasons are, what your story is, what your strengths are, and what you wanna show them, okay? Now, I think, and this is for any job interview, so just, just take this as a general job interview tip. You need to research where you're going first. So if you're going to interview at Colorado State University, then you're going to say, you know, with the increase of use of uh, cannabis products in the industry, I love how Colorado is at the forefront of research in how these products uh, will benefit and affect animals in the long run. That shows that you have a knowledge of what's going on in the industry, but also what is a strength and something that is very specific to Colorado State University. You're praising them for something they are doing. You can say, Texas A&M is where I want to be because I know Texas A&M has an MBA and DVM program and I'm very interested in both the veterinary and business aspect of things. You can say, this school is leading the way in 3D printing in the medical industry for animals. Um, I really am interested in thoroughbred racehorses and so I want to go to this school because you guys are really into A, B, and C. So you need to think about what your passions are and what those universities specifically play to because not all vet schools are the same. They all have their strengths. A lot of them have very, very um, high quality research in certain areas especially. Um, they have things that they publish more and they focus more on. And you can do simple searches like simple veterinary website searches will show you this is what we've gotten awards for. This is the new equipment that we have. This is their innovative side um, because they're trying to sell themselves to you also. But you need to research these schools and you need to be able to say, I wanna come here because you have this and I'm interested in this and I think it's really cool you do it and I am passionate about that. And that's gonna show them that you don't just wanna go to vet school, you wanna go to their vet school. Now, you can interview at five vet schools and you can tell all of them that they're amazing and they're innovative and that you're excited to come and be their vet student. And that is another really important thing. Always speak as if you already have the job or if you already have the spot. So as a vet student, I would be really excited to do A, B, and C. Um, as a student, I'm interested to see what you do in these circumstances. Um, I really think that you have to keep pounding that into their heads that you are going to be a vet student there and you already know it and this is just a formality and things like that can really make a difference being confident being straightforward i think it it really can do a lot um now this is another story uh this actually happened i was waiting to interview and the person before me bless her heart ran out of the interview room and i was like well that's not good that you're running out of the interview room and her face looked like maybe she'd been crying. So they call me next. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I think that she has run out of the interview room because they were so scary. You know, they asked questions that she could not answer. She was so stressed out. And I walk in that room and they are cleaning out the trash can and they're like, we're so sorry. Give us a minute. The person before you just threw up. I'm telling y'all, like my nerves just went away at that point because I can't do worse than the person that just threw up in the room. Like I can't be more nervous than that person because I know I'm not going to throw up. And so I would recommend you don't throw up. If you have a sensitive stomach, maybe don't eat as much that morning. Um, but I really think that, um, that helped me kind of take a deep breath and realize that everyone is terrified. Everyone is unsure. Um, and I just had to present my best self. And if I did that, and I knew where my heart was, that they would see that. 
Um, and I did well in my interviews and I got offers from the places that I interviewed. So take these tips and tricks. Hopefully they help out. Um, the final thing is know that you can do everything right. You can say everything right. That school is extremely competitive and this year may not be your year. And that's okay because there's more years in the near future. Again, it took me two times to get in. I didn't actually get any interviews the first time. I got four interviews the second time. I only did two of them and I got asked to go to both those schools. So things change year to year. Don't beat yourself up if it doesn't work out for you this year. I wish you all the best of luck. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop them below um, or you can email me. You can go to my website, www.drcrockerpetvet.com to find out more info. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks, bye.